Hi there, I'm playing with Old Chunk again. This time it's an IBM X3850 server from about 2006. And I'll show you what's inside before we throw it away. First we have eight relatively big fans here. These servers need a lot of fresh air to keep them cool. Uh, we have two power supplies with about 1300 watts, so that is 1300 watts total because the power supplies are redundant. You don't add the watts from one power supply to the other. These are uh, memory boards. Each board can hold four memory modules. There are only two installed here. A typical feature of IBM servers is this large uh, super cap here. This is on every board together with this switch. And uh, if you press that button, um, the fault LEDs will light up and you can see which memory has a fault. You can see that when the module is inside the server. The power supplies have a handle mechanism that lifts them up, so you have to open the top cover before you can remove them. That's the power input, standard power input. And you can see we have 12 volt and 100 amps about, so that's 1300 watts for each power supply. Then I take this medium board here, this middle board here out. It contains all the I.O. ports, uh, VGA, SCSI connections and uh, a couple of other things. You can see here the Adaptec SCSI uh, controller. We have two serial ports, VGA, uh, USB and uh, management uh, network connector. The blue card is the remote management uh, card or as IBM calls it the IMM, the integrated management module. The same card goes in many IBM servers. Here you can also see the ATI Radeon graphics chip and some I.O. Uh, hardware. The RAID controller. Uh, sometimes when these plastic tabs are a little bit old, they don't work as expected. You can see a lithium-ion battery here. That's for the cache, so it keeps the data in case uh, of a power outage. And then there is another funny little chip with this yellow hat. The yellow hat is in fact a, a battery, a replaceable battery, and the chip itself has contacts to connect to this battery. So that's the timekeeper, that's a, a clock chip, as you probably know, but with the battery on top of it. Then on a server from 2006 we have of course hot swap PCI slots. Uh, that was a thing for a short moment, a couple of years. Every manufacturer made them until they realized that they are not really practical because there are not so many cards you can actually change while the, uh, the system is working. Dear here, if you uh, slide this uh, orange tab here back. Uh, it will contact uh, a switch underneath and then the PCI slot will be deactivated, power will be removed. That's the CPU tray, it is locked, it has here this interlock uh, mechanism. You cannot open that when the 
top cover is on or you cannot uh, put the top cover on while this is open so because you have to first uh, remove all the fans and then you can slide this CPU uh, board here out it's pretty heavy because the CPU heat sinks are pure copper each one weighs 1.1 uh, kilogram so four of them it's 4.4 kilogram that's about 25 bucks As you can see that's the old style of processor with this lever on the socket. The processor has pins and the socket has a, a lot of holes and this lever here uh, clamps the pins tight into the, the socket and uh, yeah that's how you remove this uh, CPU. Those two Xeon processors are from two different machines. So from the machine we just saw we have this one is a 3000 MP that stands for multiprocessor. It has 4 megabyte of cache and 667 megahertz of bus frequency. Uh, MP chips can be used in multiprocessor machines. If you only have a single processor machine, you only buy an SP uh, chip, so they are a little bit cheaper. And last but not least, that's the diagnostic panel with a bunch of LEDs, and uh, they light up if anything is wrong in the machine, so you can see where to search for the problem. This pile of cards is for gold recycling, this is for the copper recycling, we have eight of them now, that's about 50 bucks. The CPUs go in my collection and we also have an M2 machine, that's the next generation. Uh, the one before had, didn't have any uh, additional name, so this one is the M2, Model 2. Uh, it's basically the same machine, a little bit more modern processor, also four of them. And to get access to the processors you have to lift here this entire chassis with this mechanism, with this hinge here. And now we can access the two processors here. Uh, the other two are right behind them. You can see the empty sockets. This machine only has two processors installed. And uh, as usual the metal wire construction here is a little bit, well it's not really finger friendly. And you can also see I ripped the processor from the socket without opening the lever. That's because the thermal paste has become quite a little bit sticky, so, but that doesn't damage the socket and we can remove the processor with a little help from my Swiss Army knife. <laughs>